Here are three reasons why I love that Elon Musk ended up actually buying Twitter. You may love him, you may hate him, but at the end of the day, he is someone that commands a room and demands attention, period. This guy makes the news consistently. He also happens to be the richest man in the world currently that we know of that actually has reported revenue. So either way, net worth wise, he's up there. I wanna walk through the three reasons real quick, but I think it's really important to first understand the context, right? When we look through the story of what happened, he originally wanted to purchase it, put the order in, and then actually wanted to back out of it and Twitter held him to it, which they should have, which is the right call in my opinion, because Twitter, their loyalty has to be to their shareholders. And the price point that he gave per share is excessive. He overpaid for it. And by doing that though, he now has full control of the platform. I have never had more fun on a platform since he took over. It's exceptional. It's almost genius if he planned this because he created so much of a stir around this entire purchase. The usage of Twitter since his takeover has skyrocketed across the board. And the reason why is because people are now coming to this quote unquote town square to now start talking shop and having conversations. And they may be talking about how much they hate the fact that Elon Musk bought it, or they may talk about how much they love it or somewhere in the middle. But either way, they're using the app, which he now owns and it's taken in private. So here are the three reasons why I love the fact that Elon Musk purchased it. Number one is that he does what is best for the business. You can tell he doesn't give two Fs what anybody else says. He truly cares about what is best for the business. And what's best for the business on Twitter is to create a space where people feel like they have the ability and the freedom to speak their mind on Twitter. And so what he wanted to do is he wanted to create a place where people could go on, share their thoughts, go back and forth, have real conversations, not be censored and be open to having tons of conversations and be able to do this because there's a ton, a ton of conversations and problems with a lot of social platforms right now. People are really fed up with the fact that they're getting censored. There's misinformation boards, disinformation boards, all these things where people feel like they're getting censored. The users don't like it, or I would say the majority of users don't like it. But the best part about all of this is that Elon is able to do what's best for the business. So on November 4th, 2022, at 7 14 PM, he tweeted this out because there was so much news around the fact that he was reducing the Twitter work force, which he just wholesale basically cut 50% of the workforce. He said regarding Twitter's reduction in force, unfortunately, there is no choice when the company is losing over $4 million a day. Remember, he took it private. So it's not a publicly traded company anymore. Everyone exited was offered three months of severance, which is 50% more than legally required. What people don't understand, a lot of people don't understand is that this is a part of doing business. When Steve Jobs came back to Apple back in 1997, when they brought him back, he fired 4,100 people right off the bat. In 1996, they had over 10,000 employees. By 1998, they had roughly 6,600. People have a very short memory when it comes to this because everyone talks about how great Steve Jobs was with the success that he was able to build with Apple, but he was also fired and then brought back and he also fired a ton of employees. Sometimes that's what happens. Sometimes that's what's needed because that's what's best for the business. So the business can continue to serve its customers to the best of their ability. So that's number one, is that he has the ability to make the best decision for the business. Number two is that Elon is is able to create a stir no matter what he does. He's an exceptional marketer. And you can see this by immediately hopping on and he starts talking about and trolling people by talking about an $8 verification fee per month, a subscription fee to stay verified, which kind of started out, people were like, is this a joke? But now he's going hardcore and it's actually being rolled out across the board. Now the speed at which it's being implemented is insane. I think it's the fastest rollout of a new feature or update in Twitter ever, which is a testament to his ability to move people and to lead people with a vision and get his team behind behind something no matter what. Besides the fact that he also has incredibly smart people that work at Tesla and his other companies that he's able to pull in if he needs to, to be able to help with his venture. But he has the ability to stir the pot. And what happens with that as a marketer is when you stir the pot, you draw a line. And when you draw a line, people know where you stand. People like to know where people stand. But what happens is, is all the people on his side, cool, they're already on his side. The people not on his side, he's giving them something to talk about. And the more that people are talking about it, the more people are coming to Twitter to talk about it. Because nowhere else in the world can you just text Next, Elon Musk, but on Twitter, you can tag him and potentially have a conversation with him. And so now he is creating all of this stir and all this attention around both him and Twitter, which is ultimately leading to more usage. When you look at this, there is a lesson here, and that is he is drawing a line in the sand and he is ultimately looking and holding to his foundations of why he bought Twitter. He wanted to create a space with more freedom and freedom of speech so people could come on here and share their thoughts. Now, the verification, whether that's going to be good or bad, will play out in the end, but he also had to figure out a way
way to monetize it. He's trying to kill two birds with one stone. The success of this, time will tell. But either way, at the end of the day, as a marketer, he's doing an exceptional job of creating attention. And right now, the name of the game in business is attention, and it will be that way for a really long time. He's doing an exceptional job right here by creating attention. He's literally going to monetize it in real time. And speaking of real time, that's reason number three why I love the fact that Elon Musk bought Twitter. And that is because you and I had the opportunity to watch a high performance individual, one of the best CEOs in the game, one of the best leaders, visionaries when it comes to tech and other incredible types of companies actually rebuild a business in real time. And he's tweeting out a ton of different stuff as it goes. And if you follow all the other accounts, you can watch all the other Twitter employees that are still there and other individuals that understand the business. They are giving you live updates in real time of how he is changing this company. And so as a business person, as a CEO myself, I'm loving this because I can hop on Twitter and I can literally just follow a thread showing what's his mind thinking? Where is he trying to go? And I can watch and look at other people's opinions and updates on what's happening inside of Twitter. Yes, everyone's like, oh, he cut a bunch of people. But I'm seeing that in real time and I understand it because if it doesn't balance out on the books, then you need to cut them. If they're too heavy, you got to cut them. It sucks, but you have to do it. It's what's right for the business. And now you get to see he's looking for a way to create more revenue for the business by monetizing on verification, which is what people truly, truly want. And if you can monetize on that, that's great. What's going to come next? I don't know. But what's great about this is now I can actually watch it. And so if you are a business person, period, whether you're a gym owner, a fitness professional, you own any business, I highly suggest following this and taking notes. Watch how he interacts. You can see that he holds very, very firm on certain aspects of his beliefs as you go through this. And if you follow it on Twitter, you can see it. You can see him engaging with people. Mark Cuban came up and Mark Cuban gave him an idea and he said, no, that's not how it's going to be. He also went back and forth with Jack Dorsey, the former founder and CEO of Twitter on some things that he disagree with because it's his company now. He's the leader. He can say what goes and he's not going to bend to the whims of other people if it doesn't make sense for his plan. And so this is an incredible lesson for all of us as business leaders to watch how he goes about this and how he stands firm with his beliefs. He's focused on creating a platform that best serves the users in what he thinks is the best way. And now we'll be able to actually watch it play out in real time. I hope you like this. This is a different piece. It's way less tactical than the fitness side, but hopefully you found some value in this. I highly suggest if you are not on Twitter, just hop on Twitter just to follow. You don't even have to tweet. Highly suggest doing that because you get to see this in real time. And then you get to create your own idea around whether you like it or you don't, rather than just reading news articles or seeing different stuff in the media talking about how horrible it is. I highly suggest looking at all sides of this, follow along and do that. Now, if you like this type of content and you want to listen to more and you want to learn how to grow a wildly profitable gym, go ahead, click that subscribe button somewhere on here. And if you're interested and you got this far and you want to learn more about how to build a wildly profitable gym, there is a PDF, free PDF download down below in the description. Click that your email, we'll send it right over. And if you want to book a call to find out more about how we build gyms and gym launch, you can book a call with our team. Either way though, hope you enjoy this video. I don't take your attention for granted and I really appreciate your time. I'll see you on the next video.